Okay, I got really red again. It moved really fast like a gazelle right there. Ow. I'm too strong. Hey guys, I'm Jim, this is Jake. Welcome to Cutting Corners. Today, we're gonna to talk about a newer service that we're offering, Dimple Dyes. Yeah, or Dimple, Dimple Forming. Dimple yeah. Forming, uh, yeah, Dimple Dyes is like the industry trade name and stuff for it, but it's essentially a forming operation that creates a, a cosmetic, but also structural um, you know, benefit to your parts. Yeah, um, one of my favorite quotes about this, uh, I follow this guy on Twitter, Emosh. Emosh, I mean, whatever. Basically, it's it's magic. You're saving weight and adding strength at the same time. And so you've probably seen this uh, if you're into like World War II aircraft. I just realized that I might be a nerd who's into World War II aircraft. It's just old. Anyway, just like <laughs> uh, race cars, yep. aircraft, stuff like that. They use this technique all the time to add rigidity and stiffness. Um, at the same time, you can you can save weight too because what we're doing is removing all this material, uh, in race cars we call it speed holes, but then when you flare it out with the dimple form procedure, uh, it actually adds uh, some rigidity too. Yeah, it's the same as like, you know, having a bend in your part and stuff. If you have a flat panel, yep. you know, uh, essentially if you add a bend to it, it adds a ton of rigidity, it's the same idea, right? And so I kind of actually have the same two parts here that are kind of cut. They're the same material, same exact part. This one has dimples, this one doesn't. Um, just to kind of show, you know, this versus, I guess you can't feel what I'm feeling, but it's a lot more. <laughs> Can we put a meter, a like strength or like a? I'll make it look like it's harder. Yeah, there you go. Like that. But um, but yeah, that's essentially what it does is it helps kind of hold up against those kind of yep. torsional movements, um, making it so you can go to a thinner piece of material and have that same rigidity. And it looks cool. Piece. It just looks badass. Yeah. Uh, so I would encourage it for all of your race car applications. The other thing, uh, again, race car stuff, it makes a great anti-slip surface. Yeah. So for foot plates, yep. or if you're gonna make a, some sort of tread or something where you need limited slip, uh, flipping I mean, it a over. Race car, like a stairs or something outside yeah. your you know, RV or something like that, you can put this on there as like a tread plate and totally. stuff. Um, don't slip and fall on it, it'll probably hurt. It'll jack you up. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I think we should talk about and stuff, and this is like avoiding mistakes and stuff, probably getting a little ahead of ourselves, is that this is a, it's a lot of deforming in the parts. Right, and so you need to be conscious about how close you are to edges, bends, or other dimple dies or other features, because you can see here on a larger dimple, there's a large portion of that material that is gonna be deformed. Yeah. And with that also, um, as you get closer to the edges, that edge is gonna pull a little bit different. So I have like a couple examples here that we can kind of talk about where, you know, as this hole gets closer to the edge, we're gonna start seeing a little bit of deformation and then that actually doesn't pull that dimple fully um, into its formed. Yeah, kind of rule manner. of thumb, stay away from the edge. Uh, you know, if you are if you have to have it in a certain spot, maybe a dimple isn't the, the best solution right there. Yep. Because we're introducing stress into the material that is uneven across the entire material. Another thing is, is that the, the die and the punch combination that makes these dimples is substantially wider than the dimple actually is yeah. as well, right? And so spacing hole to hole is also determined not just by the deformation and the stretch um, you know, around other features, but also the fact that, you know, with this part right here, if you wanna get in here nice and close, in this right here, as I kind of come in, you can see that my die is gonna hit this other dimple. And so I can't actually form any of these other holes all the way across here. And as I kind of come through here, we can see that that's just nice and flush, right? Yeah, but we couldn't get another one right here. Yeah. Uh, we just don't have room for the tooling. But luckily we handle most of that for you guys. Um, we do instant DFM. So when you, when you upload your part onto our website and you say, I want this hole dimpled, and then you go to this hole, it's gonna say, hang on, there's gonna be a collision and we'll give you warnings. Uh, you can also look at our guidelines and understand you know, the mins and maxes for everything. Hold to hole measurement is critical. Um, it's the only true measurement. Yep, My and book. then we're gonna tell you what the outside of this uh, essentially bunt, punch and die configuration is, so you know how close you can be to your bend radiuses. That's all information you can get on the website too. Yeah, you don't wanna get too close to the bend because uh, we'll run into tooling issues, yep. either bend tooling or with dimple tooling. Yeah, one thing is, it's just like all of our other hole operations though, is that we resize to the punch and die configuration that yes. you're choosing, right? So you could have an eighth inch hole and you can select an inch and a quarter dimple and we're yep. going to resize it to that inch and a quarter hole 
mind you that it actually works in that area, right? So if you have an inch wide piece of material, we're not gonna be able to resize it to the inch Yeah, there's a min and max, right? we, so. we try and be smart about it. Um, but don't worry about getting the exact hole size perfect for our tooling or whatever, we take care of that for you. Uh, okay, so it saves weight, adds strength, looks cool, helps you not fall downstairs. Um, yep. What are some things that we should avoid besides edge proximity? Um, so if you have a lot of dimples in a row like this, you're gonna start putting so much stress into it, you're gonna get a lot of bowing in your parts. That is gonna be something you're gonna see, especially in something like this. One way to counteract that is to put a bend yep. along you know, that bowed area, that'll straighten it out especially off the CNC brakes where we can do one long bend at one continuous time. Yeah, we um, call it uh, like the English wheel effect. So you're, you're basically running a piece of metal through an operation unevenly. It starts to relax yeah. and, and stress that material and it'll bow. But if you put a bend right here, it just brings it all back into shape. Um, this also has to be in a material that is formable, right? Yes. So, um, you know, no 70-75, no 70-75, no 60-61. 6061 actually does work with this. Oh, really? It's oh, only because mind. we're doing such little deformation instead of a full bend. Oh, that's true. Um, 6061 can be ran through dimples. Because we're not going to crack it because it's exactly. so, so soft. Okay, yeah. sorry, it's new, I'm learning. No, we're good. Um, mild steel, stainless steel, yep. um, no plastics, that kind of yep. stuff, that doesn't work. And also, we're limited on thickness. Uh, really, the, the spirit of this operation is to take a thin material and make it behave like a thicker material. You know, again, go into that weight savings. So if you want this in quarter inch, no, we're not gonna do it. Uh, a, the tooling won't handle it. Yep. Uh, it, it's dangerous. And it's really not in the spirit of that application. Um, again, I think in World War II, they did some pretty thick stuff and they made portable runways. Uh, oh, that's all this, fantastic. They just lay it down in a field and huh. yeah, it was cool. I saw a picture. The more, anyway. the more you know. Yeah, nerd stuff. Uh, um, so, lost my train of thought. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, so this is obviously done before powder coating, but and before our, any of our finishing operations. So anodizing, plating theoretically, um, powder coating, it's gonna be done beforehand and then coated over it, right? Yeah. Sorry, our thickness, we're limited. We go up to 125, right? 125. Eighth inch, three millimeters, 125 now. Yep. Uh, alternatives, let's say that dimple forming is not gonna work for my application for some reason. What do I do if I want that strength? Um, you can put a bend in it, like we talked about earlier. Um, there's bead rolling that you can do. At home, we don't offer that. Yet. We don't offer bead rolling, but um, yeah, bead rolling, you can get a bead rolling kit. Go a thicker. Roll in it. You can go thicker. So yeah, yeah. The, the idea is, you know, you can take something that's, that's 40 thou and make it behave like it's 80 thou by adding that strength to it. If you can't put that operation in there, maybe go 80 thou, but you know, then you're gonna add more weight. You could go with something that is a lighter weight and stronger and thicker material like 7075 aluminum uh, but then get out your wallet because that stuff's expensive yes yeah yep so cheap easy looks cool yeah i mean it's a, it's a beautiful way to have a nice finished part i mean on this one obviously it's a laptop stand but it looks beautiful yeah in the end it gives some character and stuff so you can use it for cosmetic and structural purposes um dimple's just an awesome new feature that we're adding in yeah and it's inexpensive um the price declines as you add dimples on a single part. And then of course, with our quantity discounts, each part is discounted on top of itself. So to get a price and to check it out, upload your drawing to sendcutsend.com. Thanks guys. Love you. Love bye. you, bye.